As we gather in worship today, we acknowledge that Calvary United Church stands on Treaty 6 territory, and we pay our respects to our elders, both past and present, wherever we find ourselves this morning. We recommit to our status as an affirming ministry within the United Church of Canada and strive to be an open-minded, inclusive, and welcoming place of worship. It is our deepest hope that all people might feel at home in this space, and we give thanks to God for this Sabbath day, where we join our hearts and minds in prayer. Good morning, and welcome to Calvary United Church. We invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. God the Creator is with us this day, and so we gather in the name of the One who made the sun and the moon, the One who made the ocean waves and the prairie wind, the One who made each of us and calls us to this place, just as we are. Christ, the One who taught us of a loving God, is with us this day, and it is in the shelter of God's love that we gather. May this time be one brushed with hope, peace, and acceptance knowing that it is in celebration, our great diversity, that God's love is most clearly known. Spirit, the power that binds us together in perfect harmony is with us this day. And bound by the love of God, we rejoice and lift our prayers. For here, though we are all so very different, we are united, we belong. We may find the space our souls need to rest in the Creator and sing out to the Holy One. circle wide, draw it wider still, let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle wide, got this to the point of the circle, round to all creation turns, nothing lies. stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle wide. Let our hearts touch far horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no borders, faithful to God's cause. Hello everyone and welcome to Pride Week. Last week we got to wear red and celebrate accessibility and ability diversity and we put the first red arch of our rainbow up. This week what I want you to do is I want you to go get the 
orange arch of your rainbow. So that could be another piece of your drawing if you're doing a drawing or another piece of paper to tape to your other one. Or if you have a whole lineup of orange cars, that'd be super cool too. And remember, if you're going to take a picture, you can send it to me and we'll put them all together at the end. So today I'm going to put out the orange piece of our rainbow. This is our piece. And then we're going to have a wee chat about pride and what that is all about. So Pride Month takes place in June in Saskatchewan and all across the world. It's a whole month that we get to celebrate sexual and gender diversity. Pride started a long time ago with an event called the Stonewall Riots, where queer folks stood up and said that they wanted equal rights. They wanted to be able to love who they loved without it being illegal. And they wanted people not to tell them who they should or shouldn't be. These days, you can hardly drive around town in June or go on the internet without seeing rainbow and transgender, non-binary, pansexual, ace, gender fluid, bisexual flags, all of them, and so many more. There's lots of different events in June, too, that mark Pride Month. There's parades and marches, craft events and concerts and even dances. People get together and celebrate all different ways through June. Pride is a way that sexual and gender diverse people get to celebrate that they're part of our community, show who they are and stand up for the right, their rights as people. But pride's not only for the LGBTQ2 community to take part in, anybody can be an ally. What does it mean to be an ally though? An ally is a person that stands side by side with folks as they're marching. And if they hear another person making fun or being mean to somebody in the LGBTQ2 plus community, they stand up and say they don't like that. To be an ally, you can also ask your family to display a rainbow or an ally flag in June. You can take part in parades or virtual events this year because we, we can't be together. We can all work together to make sure that we are doing our part to make sure every person is included and know that they're valued. We can take the time to listen and learn from everyone. And most of all, allies, remember that all people are God's people and part of the body of Christ, just like it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, all of the members of the body, though many, are one. And so it is with Christ, for in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. There may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. In, if one member suffers, all members suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. There's also another beautiful part in the middle of this passage that says, Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. If the foot says, Because I'm not a hand, I may not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, Because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would make it no less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? Meaning that just like our body being made up of a bunch of different parts that work together to make us the people that we are, this too is just like people around us. We have a bunch of different and diverse people with different experiences that make up a beautiful tapestry of human beings. And that makes the whole world work together. If you tried to forget that you had a foot, it would be very difficult to walk. Or if you tried to pretend that your whole body was one big toe, it would be hard to see or smell or do anything but kind of lay on the floor and do nothing. And that would be no fun. But if we honor and respect each and every different part of our bodies, or in this case, each and every different person, and what they bring to the world and to the body of Christ, we will all be able to rejoice together. Let's pray together, friends. This is a prayer that was adapted from JesusIsLoveBlog.com. O oh, wildly inclusive God, who loves all the beautiful rainbow of human sexu sexual and gender diversity, remind us that we have a very practical trinity, one who gives life, one who redeems life, 
one who stays with us forever. Hear us, Holy Spirit, as we strive to make a home in all churches that call themselves the body of Christ for all of your people, God. Let us stand arm in arm, queer and allies, rejoicing in all the beauty that you have created in this world. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 7. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all people. Our second reading is from 1 John, chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Hear what the scriptures are saying to the church. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every heart be acceptable unto you, O God, our creator and redeemer. Amen. If you and I were to sit down and talk about churchy God-like stuff for a while, you'd learn pretty quickly that I was gifted with this unbelievably easy faith. My parents, my mother especially, were the type of people who struggled with theology. They wrestled with doctrine, they argued with opinionated ministry personnel, which was mind-blowingly entertaining for the record. And perhaps most importantly, they confessed and then explored their doubts. I watched as their faith waxed and waned and waxed again, and in the process learned this is just the way faith was. I remember meetings in our living room where a group of church folk would gather and talk about inclusive language and women's rights and roles within the church and what Jesus would have to say about Sunday shopping. I sat at the top of the stairs and listened, sneaking down now and then to steal some of the cookies or a handful of sugar cubes that had been forgotten in the heat of debate. When I was 13, the conversations grew even more intense. I remember in the late 80s when this group of church folk, who were like family to me, argued, cried, disagreed, and eventually came to a conclusion of what they ultimately believed about God. Then after all that hard work, after years of wrestling with who and what God was and how the church fit into that, or rather how they fit into the church in spite of all that, these adults turned to me, handed me this gift of faith and the truth they had come to know. God is love, they said. Easy. From that point on, every faith question that entered my mind, every hard theological diatribe I've had to endure, every doubt that has entered my heart, every moment of judgment, self or otherwise, that has plagued my soul has been reconciled with this one faith statement from 1 John. God is love. Now, I can see some of you rolling your eyes the way my kids do when I tell them I love them. Yes, we know, they say, fully annoyed. You tell us that all the time. As if beating this drum of love over and over just gets too much. But I keep saying it anyway because I know from experience that someday my children will be told they are not lovable. I know that someday someone will break their hearts, will cast them aside without thought, Maybe they'll even be told someday by a church person how sad it is that they can't go to heaven on account of them not being real Christians, like I was told when I was 13, and news had gotten out that my church had decided to change how we'd been acting and welcome our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters into the church and the ministry. He was nice enough about it, though. He said he'd pray for me. I'm not sure he thought all of this exactly would be where his prayers would end up, but whatever. I shouldn't have been surprised. I mean, the church has not always been an active agent of change and growth when it comes to, well, most things, but especially diversity. It has often acted ruthlessly, enforcing exclusive traditions, doctrines, and boundaries. This has turned people away, not only from our pews, but from God. The church has inflicted pain and the heavy burden of judgment upon many thousands of people. And to any of you gathered here today who have felt condemned and judged within the walls of the church, I am truly sorry. 
I know I can't change it, but I am sorry. This week, I started reading I Am Still Here by Austin Channing Brown. She tells a story about a student trip she went on while at university that explored black history down in the southern states. After leaving a museum dedicated to the history of lynching, the bus ride was tense. The emotion was thick, she wrote. Then a white classmate stood up and said, I don't know what to do with what I've learned. I can't fix your pain and I can't take it away, but I can see it and I can work for the rest of my life to make sure your children don't have to experience the pain of racism. Doing nothing is no longer an option for me. So I tell my kids that they are worthy of love all the time. Not doing so is not an option for me. I do it so that when they hear the opposite message, they won't believe it. I tell you that God is love and deeply loves you and your children all the time. Not doing so is not an option for me. I do it so that when you are faced with anti-love messages from good church folk or whomever, you won't believe them either. Anyone who knows this church knows we work hard to make it a place where God is love. I know we don't always get it right. We fail a lot. But I know we try. We try to be a sanctuary in the truest sense of the word, where those seeking union with the holy feel they belong no matter what. And we hold to the truth that no person has the right, or frankly, the power, to take God's love away from anyone. And so you will hear me say it over and over and over again until you roll your eyes. God loves you just as you are. You are molded in God's image. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. If you ever doubt that, give me a call. I'll remind you. I only ask you do the same for me from time to time. In the 56th chapter of Isaiah, we are told that God's house is to be called a house of prayer for all people. If we were to make a new church sign for the front of our building, I'd love to have that on the top of it. This is a house of prayer for all people in rainbow letters over our heads. It should be a part of every Sunday school class, every confirmation lesson, every single worship service, every Bible study. Every new person who walks into this place should be told right off the bat, just so you know, this is a place for all the people. Hope you're okay with that. A diversity service like this is good, it's important, but only if we promise to make what we say here in this moment a part of everything we do, woven into the very fabric of the ministry we share. Glennon Doyle wrote, the only meaningful thing we can offer one another is love. Not advice, not questions about our choices, not suggestions about the future, just love. And I think this is meaningful, important, because it's not always easy to shift how we look at the world or each other or who we see reflected back to us in the mirror, to brush all of that with just love. Well, sometimes that's really hard to do because so often we've been taught the opposite, right? And so in a way, I was gifted with this amazingly easy faith. I was taught very young that God is love, full stop. But I was also taught many times over the years by many different people that this wasn't a truth for everyone. Today, surrounded by rainbows in this house of prayer, feeling all of you here with us, we say it is. God is love for everyone. The last few weeks, I struggled trying to imagine what this Sunday would look like, feel like. How in the world would we celebrate this day of color, life, and inclusion without the very community of people we long to celebrate and be with? And while I struggled, I had a song playing over and over in my head on repeat. You know what that's like. It's about unlikely friends, different, untraditional. They stumble upon each other as they wander along, 
and in the end choose to travel together in spite of or maybe because of their differences. I'm thankful that the composer of this song agreed to sing it for us today. Alison Ray, a daughter of this church, if I'm not mistaken, wrote this song one summer at Camp Tap Tapawingo. It is one of those special places where she learned that God's love really was very, very colorful. It helped her teach those around her that no matter who we are or where we're from or how we pray or who we love, that if we can just carry on together, our world will be a much more beautiful, gentler, and life-giving place. And the house of prayer for all people, well, it would expand beyond these walls to wherever we find ourselves. Amen. Goldfish swimming out to sea and met a whale said, oh dear me, what's a little goldfish to do? Swimming side by side, oh, with you. Well, the big whale said, little friend, don't you worry, where is the fire and what's the big hurry? Nothing to do but continue along on our way. like the big sea sometimes it feels like it's just you and me against the ocean tide nothing to do but swim on do 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 well fish and the whale go in there Swimming together now a couple of days Met a shark, oh who was Looking for a tasty treat Now don't you fret and don't you frown Cause I'm gonna turn the story upside down Turns out the shark was the nice sort The vegetarian type like the big sea sometimes it feels like it's just you and me against the ocean tide nothing to do but swim on do 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 We believe in red, the color of anger, righteous anger, that moves us with passion along the moral arc of the universe. We believe in God, who weaves together all colors, uniting diversity. We believe in orange, the color of kindled flame that burns away the tarnish and reveals the gold in our ideas and imagination. We believe in God, who weaves together all colors, uniting diversity. We believe in yellow, the warmth of sun that pulls from the earth the wheat and the bread, 
and spreads across the land a field of gold. We believe in God, who weaves together all colors, uniting diversity. We believe in green, creation's carpet, from oak leaf to juniper moss, the texture of life richer than jade and more precious than emerald. We believe in God, who weaves together all colors, uniting diversity. We believe in blue, a planet's worth of ocean and sea, below a thousand acres of sky under which we live and breathe and share our being with all creation. We believe in God, who weaves together all colors, uniting diversity. We believe in purple, robust as the grape poured in the goblet and shared with all given to all the richer story told around a table of grace revealing the color of love that all people might feel at home loved cherished united we believe in god who weaves together all colors uniting diversity our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we leave this space of worship today, we remember that Calvary United Church is an affirming ministry within the United Church of Canada. Calvary United Church believes that all people are created in the image of God and in Jesus Christ. We are all one. We are committed to creating a community that celebrates the diversity of God's creation, which includes age, gender identity, racial and cultural backgrounds, sexual orientation, differing abilities, ethnic and theological backgrounds, spiritual beliefs, economic circumstances, and all definitions of family. As a congregation, we celebrate the full rainbow spectrum of human diversity and respond to God's call to love and compassion. We are willing to share our faith and our gifts to do whatever God calls us to do. We will do so with compassion, fun, courage, and laughter. We pray for God's spirit to guide us as we work for reconciliation and acceptance for all people in both the church and society. Go in peace.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.